I feel like this is just a natural thing now where we checked out that watch Mo mojo thing before where it's like I'm really curious to see like you know the take from people that aren't super hardcore fighting game community folks of what their favorite fighting games are and I felt like there was a couple of really interesting takes on like what is the top at that point 20 fighting games of all time and now IGN has put up their top 10 best fighting games of all time. So this is like not very focused, I guess. This is like a very blanket list, I'm going to assume. Because already it's like from Guilty Gear Stride to Ultimate Marvel 3, and I just saw like Third Strike. I'm super curious like what direction IGN is going to take. Because when I think of the best fighting games of all time, I usually, my brain goes to like the most influential what were the fighting games that like changed everything type of stuff and that's the stuff that usually where my brain immediately goes but yes that's much different than like what is the best right that that's sort of like super clickbaity shit you know and it, it and it absolutely is where it's like oh what's the best and it's like well that's almost impossible to answer because there's so many different caveats of like this genre and how one was more important than the other or better than the other or the best so i'm super curious if this list has tekken 3 <laughs> you know i'm super curious if this list has virtual fighter 2 i'm i'm very curious in what eras of fighting games are going to be represented in this list because there was some crazy stuff like like Def Jam which I thought was crazy at the time until I played it um like War of the Monsters or I think that's what the game was but there's there's a lot of interesting stuff on the previous uh on the previous video that we watched from Watch Mojo so I'm very interested to see what IGN's take a modern day IGN what their take is on what is the 10 best fighting games of all time. I'm gonna be pausing at several points throughout this video. Prepare to strike now. Fighting games have a special place in both the past and present of gaming. It's a genre that requires quick thinking, twitch reflexes, and vast amounts of knowledge of both yourself and your opponent's options to play at a high level. Okay. It can often seem intimidating, but some of the most recognizable series in pop culture, Street Fighter 4 is in there. Street Fighter and Mortal Kombat, belong to that Mortal same Kombat genre. 1's in there. So for our deliberations in assembling this list, we've laid out some special criteria. We've excluded platform fighters such as the Smash Bros series as that's important enough to be a list on its own we only have one game fair enough each series right and while right off the bat fair enough you know uh, i i feel like that is a good that's a good call right just because it's yeah like even if you if you include things like smash then some of them are clearly going to be just at the top of the list in several ways just because of how much stuff they have in them and how huge their audiences are so that okay all right, so we're already focusing the list. Legacy can play a big part. They must offer robust mechanics and still be fun to play today. Here's our list of the top Garo 10 fighting games. Is there being shown right now? Interesting. He must win. All right, MK9. Mortal Kombat 9 marked a turning point okay, in the history of MK. It was a reboot. MK9 is a good game, a lot of content, probably the best roster in a Mortal Kombat, Kombat game ever next years. to Trilogy. Puzzle Combat, Mortal or, Kombat, you know, and Armageddon. weird creative fatalities were all gone in lieu of Games great was very influential, started like NRS's big, you know, studio else. career like all over again. It turned best possible decision for the series because Mortal Kombat 9 brought the First legendary great fighting story mode in a fighting game, you know, to its excellent story mode, at least the cinematic story mode, and redone mechanics that laid the foundation for subsequent games to follow. It certainly was not the most balanced fighting game in the world, but that was part of its charm. And its imperfections are actually one of the reasons why many fans still prefer MK9 over 10 and 11 to this day. I would say, uh, this, th I'm actually pretty surprised that this is at 10. I would almost put this a bit higher, right? Considering that this is arguably, uh, like, one of the best, most highly regarded MK games, even over the old school MK games. I might even think this would be like a 6 or a 7 on a list, but okay. Hey. Uh, that already makes sense. You are not ready for what you are about to Wow, face. okay. Even just a passing glance at Skullgirls in motion will tell you that- Skullgirls also had a really high, high spot on the, uh, the Watch Mojo list. So that's interesting to see that these games, or this game specifically, even from like a casual to a broader perspective audience, does get really high remarks in almost every single way, and it isn't just a hardcore FGC thing, you know? It at least has like- a bit of draw outside of just what it is. Continuing, Skullgirls, here we go. That this isn't your average indie fighting game, but there's more to Skullgirls than just its looks. Skullgirls has one of the most flexible fighting game systems ever made. Every character has a ton of different combo routes, and you can play as a solo character with increased health and damage, a balanced duo team, or fill up your squad with three characters that are weaker, but- This makes me wonder if Marvel vs. Capcom 2 will be on this list. Uh, because like I said earlier from the, the casual front, NBC2 is like, you know, based on the stuff they're saying, 
And this game is very much based on the roots of Marvel vs. Capcom 2. I wonder if it'll be here. Offer the advantage of extra assists and combo extensions. Add in memorable character design, art style, and music on top of silky smooth gameplay and net play, and it's no wonder Skullgirl still thrives 10 years later. It's go time, baby. What? Virtual really? Straight to VF5. Wow. Over even VF2. Okay, so already I'm I'm thinking modern modern fighting game sensibilities are having a giant influence on this list. I didn't see that coming, you know? It's interesting. I mean, you hear their reasoning. Fighter V Final Showdown was the final arcade and console iteration of Sega's premier 3D fighter, and Ultimate Showdown rebuilt the game on Yakuza's Dragon Engine for modern consoles. Often credited with greatly influencing or even creating the 3D fighter genre, Virtual Fighter is foundational to video games. The likes of Yu Suzuki, creator of Shenmue and Space Harrier, and Toshihiro Nagoshi, longtime head of the Yakuza series, helped craft a series focused on grounded martial arts, vast movement, attack, and counter options, and characters that became instantly iconic. Virtual Fighter V represents the peak of this design, with gameplay that still feels true to its roots, yet distinct from any other fighter out there, and improves on the series' online features. And although some single-player offerings have been removed from earlier versions of Virtual Fighter V, Ultimate Showdown is the easiest way to play the latest entry on modern hardware. With incredibly high ceilings for execution, such as moves that require input windows as small as 1 60th of a second, and characters that are fun to just mash buttons on, hmm. Virtual Fighter V Ultimate Showdown Showdown is a must-play for fans of 3D fighters and the genre as a whole. Better run home to mama now. Uh, that's ve wow. KI is on here. Jesus, dude. KI's influence is fucking nuts. Um, the fact that Killer Instinct is already above Virtual Fighter is kind of crazy to me, but I think that just goes to show how much people love KI. Uh, VF5 being on there is pretty. It feels pretty in tune. Right, I, I do say that like something about something about VF5 because this is a game that's been around since 2006. Right, just to let you know, this is this is not a game that recently came out. No, it's a new coat of paint over a 2006 game for the most part. Uh, and the fact that IGN is giving that its recognition, you know, I, I feel like there's a lot more. There's definitely a, a, a perspective here that is a bit different than the Watch Mojo list, at least as of right now. It, this this definitely feels like there's so people, these people are maybe maybe very much in tune with like what's actually going on with fighting games and how influential they are and how great some of them are regardless of them being hugely you know either FGC or casual centric because that definitely doesn't exist with Virtual Fighter very much. So um, we're only at number seven and this list is already getting some brownie points from me. And then might might about to get some more. 2013's Killer Instinct proved the series was more than the Mortal Kombat imitator some claimed it to be. It was one of the first mainstream fighting games to integrate rollback netcode, and its online play is still among the smoothest around. Its dojo mode is the best teaching tool the genre has ever seen. It doesn't just teach you how to play Killer Instinct, it teaches you how to play fighting games, full stop, and is required reading for anyone trying to learn the genre. What's more, Killer Instinct is packed with great single-player content, and no matter how you play it, it looks great and has a killer soundtrack by Mick Gordon. But whether you're yelling along with the announcer while pulling off an ultra combo, landing a perfectly timed combo or counter breaker, or just learning a new character in training mode, Killer Instinct feels great to play and has the technical depth any great fighter needs while remaining unique. Now, if only Microsoft would release a sequel. <laughs> All right, these guys get brownie points from me. All right. <laughs> okay. All right. So already, uh, whoever, whoever made this video at IGN seems definitely in tune. They get it. All right, they, they, okay. All right, now it feels like they're just straight pandering to me. <laughs> like, it feels like, mm, all right, okay. Cause I feel like that's also a fair spot for Killer Instinct on a list, right? I feel that's actually a pretty decent spot uh, of where I would put KI on like, yeah, some fantastic fighting game stuff and ridiculously content rich and great online shit. What? <laughs> Wow, Ultimate okay, okay, okay. If Ultimate Marvel 3 is on here, that means no Marvel 2? 
Marvel vs. Capcom 3 is set apart by its character balance, or lack thereof, and team construction. Many of the characters are broken in a way that only Marvel can get away with, and being able to put three of these characters together, each with one of three assist options in varying orders, creates a sandbox of possibilities. You can be in complete control as you perfectly execute an infinite combo one game, and question your life decisions as you're stuck blocking Soul Fist non-stop without having a chance to move the next game. You can start a game off with a mix-up leading to a death combo, mix up your opponent's next character into another death combo, and make one execution error on their third character just to watch your whole team die to a level 3 X-Factor comeback. It's brutal and unforgiving, but that feeling of being all-powerful is worth it. It's fast, flashy, and the combo system is ridiculous. It will garner your attention and take you for a ride. Whoa! Oh god, and then KOF 13, that's very high. Um, and top 5 for KOF 13. I, I'm just trying to shock that Marvel, Mar Ultimate Marvel 3 is on there. And knowing that KOF 13 is like one of the most beloved 2D fighting games, already being aware that that exists, you know, and not choosing like maybe a classic KOF, which you easily could do. You can put like KOF 98 or like 2002 UM or something like that on here. I don't know. I feel like KOF 13 is is a pretty wildly known um, from a lot of people as being like the, the biggest premium 2D fighting game ever since. So this, this, the King of this list, series. all I'm saying is that this list seems to be pretty in touch has a number of great entries, with many choosing 98 and 2002 as their favorites, and 15 I ghost wrote this, chat. ...receiving a lot of love as the newest entry. However, for our money, it's KOF 13 that remains one of the best fighting games of all time. The super detailed pixel art, pace of play, and hyperdrive combo system all helped KOF have a resurgence in the competitive and casual fighting game scene that continues to this day. And although the infamously difficult combo trials remain, they're not even necessary to use while playing. The characters, team-based combat, and beautiful animation keep this particular king on the throne. And then it's like, number four air guys <laughs> what I i'm ready i'm ready for something to like blow my mind number two uh <laughs> psychic force <laughs> like i'm ready for some crazy old thing that few people have actually heard of outside of this chat number one pepsi man <laughs> like i'm ready for that shit oh wow okay yeah, Not fair only enough. is Dragon Ball Fighters finally a good Dragon Ball game, but it's an amazing fighting game in its own right. The first thing you'll notice is the presentation. It is absolutely stunning to look at, and the sounds of haymakers, super dashes, Top five and energy beams give the action the punch it really Hard needs. Hard to really you can disagree. Freeze nearly any frame, and you might think it's straight from the anime. Combine its presentation with a deep roster of fan favorite characters, 3v3 tag system, an approachable auto combo system that makes doing flashy combos easy for beginners, and you have one of the most fun to play fighting games in recent memory. Memory, with competitive legs that still endure to this day. And with the recent announcement of rollback netcode, Dragon Ball Fighters has a very bright future ahead oh, wow. of it. This was made post, um, this was made post, uh, Evo. Okay. Yeah, this all seems very in touch so far, right? What's number three? Yeah. T7. <laughs> Tekken has always been known as one of the most- And you know what? This also makes sense too now because it's the best-selling Tekken, right? I mean, I think a lot of people would, would be by default say, what is the best Tekken? And that really boils down to Tekken 3 or Tekken 5. But as of like right now, Tekken 7 is the best selling Tekken game of all time. So arguably, uh, yeah, I, I think Tekken 3 still has a bigger impact overall. I think I still personally disagree with this because Tekken 5 is a more content rich game and Tekken 3, te I don't know if it technically is, but... T3 is more influential. And this is the big difference of like these lists and where I think I agree slash disagree, where it comes down to personal preferences. I think if you start arguing like what was the most influential, what changed the industry when it came out, what was like the biggest fucking thing in the world when that game dropped. And there are several fighting games that line up with that, that I, I, I think are much different than like a, a best of list, you know? So yeah, Tekken 7 2015 came out beta testing. Uh, in arcades in 2015. It's an old-ass game at this point. I'm not shocked that we're getting Tekken 8. I even thought it was going to be later, but I can see with, once again, modern sensibilities that this makes a lot of sense.
difficult fighting game franchises. Its 3D movement adds layers of complexity, there are over 50 characters each with well over 100 moves apiece, and the simple act of moving backwards properly requires practice. Its depth and complexity make it every bit as demanding as it is rewarding, and those who put in the time will be rewarded. What sets Tekken 7 apart from other entries in the series, and earns it a spot here, is how much it improved in accessibility without cutting back on its depth. The series returning to 1v1 from the 2v2 format in Tekken Tag Tournament 2 cuts the amount of moves you need to remember in half, but all of the characters individually are just as complex as they were, if not more. Rage Arts and Rage Drives are exciting comeback mechanics but will never beat out solid play, and while the slow-mo finishers don't change much of anything to the gameplay, they have created some of the hypest moments in tournaments. Tekken 7 hits the balance of attracting a new audience without alienating hardcore fans perfectly. So that's, uh, th okay, so whoever wrote this is very much in touch. Uh, this is obviously somebody that's been following fighting games for a very long time and has obviously been, like, aware of, of the change of the industry, especially over the mid-2010s when fighting games were quite specifically just trying to take things away from characters. So this is a very balanced take on this whole situation that, yeah, Tekken 7 wasn't afraid to be a hardest hard as shit game. This game was not afraid to keep a bunch of strategy and uh and tic tacs that are not easy to do and to essentially keep characters difficult right things are not easy combos aren't specifically much harder because of like very generous uh frame buffer but at the same point you know they they didn't like take away half of the character's move list which was happening for a lot of other fighting games around this time frame so yeah the whoever wrote this whoever the announcer is uh that's doing the vo is is pretty aware of that and that's a bold take for tekken that this game still was able to reach 9 million units sold um yeah granted not even not mentioning the, the online but tekken was was able to still make a fighting game that is appealing by not just toning down its gameplay right they actually added more stuff uh to the game over time even over you know games like tekken 6. So that's that that's that's a that's a this is a critical thing for fighting games is that we do not need just to make the gameplay simple and have that be the big draw of the game. That's not going to get players into it by just making the game simple. We have to expand the game in some way. And Tekken Tekken Seven did expand the gameplay in some ways. They changed the bound system. They added the screw system. Right. Uh, this might, might sound very funny. Uh, they did add Rage Drive, Rage Arts to some chagrin, but at the same time, they did expand the gameplay in ways that was different than before. So, I mean, that's good, right? I, once again, fighting games are allowed to um, be more accessible. That 100%, that is fine. But you can't just make something more accessible by making it easier, and that's it. There needs to be other things that you can do with it. There needs to be new things that you can do with the new accessibility. And it, it can be simplified, but it has to also be expanded. And the fact that whoever's making this video is aware of that is pretty dope. Wow, Strive. Okay, I want to see. I want to see why. I feel like Strive series is like has been pumping out once again. Th this game, game obviously took the world by storm last year. Perfect, perfect time, perfect place. Just reached a million units, and I feel like it's a little high. Right, it's a it's a little high. Uh, so I'm curious what what this editor has to say about it. I, I, once again, I actually think Stripe deserves to be in a top 10, especially with modern fighting game sensibilities, but I'm curious what they what their what their praise is boiling to. Games for more than two decades, but Guilty Gear Strive is where Arc System Works flagship title finally found mainstream success, and for good reason. For sure. Strive sports the best rollback netcode in the business, something that was largely unheard of in a mainstream fighter even a few years ago. But good netcode alone does not a great fighter make. Strive also refined the series' notoriously technical gameplay, making it easy to pick up and understand without losing the depth or the diversity of Guilty Gear's Gonzo cast. Every single single one of Strive's 20 characters, whether it's Siri's poster boy and rushdown monster soul bad guy, or the coffin swanging Gold Lewis Dickinson, plays completely differently from one another. So there's an enormous amount to learn and discover even if you only play a single character. Add in Roman cancels, which lets you cancel any action into another okay. action, and Strive has an almost limitless level of player freedom and expression. Combine all that with an- Definitely up to, you know, 
I think it's definitely like a, 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 you could you could approach the game that way. You know, I think that's Excellent I think it's a level headed take. Detailed teaching tools, tons of concept art and customization options to unlock a rock and soundtrack spanning nearly every game in the franchise and some of the most impressive visuals in the genre. And it's easy to see why Strive has taken the fighting game community by storm. Yeah, and I think all this is fair, right? I think a lot of this stuff is is fair. Like and, and while while some of you like and uh, even me might not completely agree with that because yeah, Strive is absolutely absolutely limited in comparison to previous titles the perspective that we have of like just how previous games even functioned and worked in the old guilty gear series is the way it is but it doesn't change the fact that strive was trying to be different right that the game the game was absolutely looking to completely change the way guilty gear is played because guilty gear for a very 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 long time had been like a legacy skill game in many ways going all the way up into the xr series where a lot of the stuff that worked in the old games just carried over even into the new 3D games. Um, and Strive is like, okay, so we want to we want to take legacy skill and throw it out the window, right? So even even by that criteria, if we approach Strive like it's a different Guilty Gear than the previous ones, because it's trying to be a different Guilty Gear, yeah, there still is a lot of absolute freedom, right? In comparison to many of the other 1v1 fighting games that have existed before this, right? Strive still 100% has a lot of freedom, even though it has less moves than previous games. I get it. To give the game its credit, right? Even though some of us might like the way characters play or the way other games play the game does deserve its credit it has a shit ton of freedom compared to some other 1v1 fighting games that are big AAA titles right so what i'm curious of is what number one is going to be because my brain right now my head is telling me that number one is going to be street fighter 5 because ign historically has reviewed street fighter 5 very well so my my brain right now is either going to be like street fighter 5 or something like street fighter 2 you know, number one, it's Injustice 2. No, I don't think so. I don't think so. My, my, my brain is like, there's no Street Fighters on here. It's going to be a Street Fighter game. It's either going to be SF4, SF5, or SF2. Picking a single game to yeah, represent. Yeah, okay. Yeah, okay. Yeah, okay. List suddenly became based as fuck. Yeah, there's definitely like, what is this list? What is it? I must have wrote this. Right? That's the only reason I'm watching it, Chad. I wrote it. I don't disagree. Right? I don't. I don't disagree. But I want to hear their take. And the most storied fighting game franchise was a tough ask. After all, Street Fighter 2 popularized the genre when it hit arcades in 1991, and Street Fighter 4 resurrected it when it hit home consoles in 2009. Okay, so they're literally addressing it, right? Like, what about Street Fighter 2? What about Street Fighter 4? Right? Give me, give me their reasoning. I want to hear it. But Street Fighter 3 Third Strike is something special. It gave us Evo Moment 37, the Daigo Parry, and inspired an entire generation of players. But there's so much more to it than that. The sprite work is still some of the most beautifully animated around, the backgrounds ooze style, and the jazz-inspired soundtrack features some of the best music in any fighting game. Even the roster, underappreciated at the time because of how few characters carried over from Street Fighter 2 and how weird several of the characters are, holds up remarkably well with options to suit any playstyle. But the real highlight is the parry system. The decision to make any attack, from Hadoukens to Super Arts parryable, adds almost limitless depth to a series already renowned for it, while keeping it fairly easy to pick up and play for newcomers. Third strike. So what I'm getting from this list is that this editor, if not whoever wrote this, definitely understands that the, the, the complexity of fighting games is something special, right? That we cannot take away uh, the complexity and depth of fighting games just for the sake of appealing towards a casual audience because it will actually do the opposite, right? The effect will have a reverse effect, um, which has shown in some cases over the past few years to be kind of true. Choosing Third Strike because it is the best executed, weirdest Street Fighter of all of them is interesting, right? But I, I don't know if it more comes along the fact that like, they know I'm gonna watch this more than the fact that I, I think that many people actually think this way, right? I think there's just so many people that feel this way about certain, the, the, some of the games on this list that I completely agree with. I'm thinking so, just based on the way that I hear people talk about these games, regardless of their, like, how massive their experience is. No Soul Calibur, right? No Soul Calibur in the list at all. Soul Calibur 1, 
I'd argue is a top 10 game. Um, but that was influential, I guess, a bit more than being popular. So I, anyway, uh, let's continue. Let's get this almost done. Strike showed us what was possible, bringing the genre's most important series up to speed with its contemporaries while simultaneously elevating it to new heights. More importantly, all of it holds up today, something most games from 1999 can't say, and recent re-releases even support rollback netcode. Street Fighter 3 Third Strike is, quite simply, the greatest fighting game ever made. <laughs> Shit. Never thought I'd be agr agreeing with, fi with, with IGN on a list. Never thought I'd be with, uh, agreeing with IGN so hard. Uh, because that is, that's my statement. That's, it, and I wouldn't say is the, I would never say it is the greatest fighting game of all time, but this is a, you know, it's IGN. This is a big journalism, um, video game website. You know, they have to, they have to broad scale approach it. Uh, well, while I absolutely have said, and we'll say all these years, what is your favorite fighting game of all time? And it's third strike. I mean, it still is to this day. I can't say I really disagree with a lot of this top 10. I think the only thing I would have changed is some of the order. And there you have it, our choices for the top 10 fighting games of all time. Which games do you think belong on the list? Make sure to let us know in the comments below. And for everything else gaming, you're already in the right place. IGN. Here's the funny, here's the, the funny thing. Is there, is there uh, actual descriptions of uh, reasoning behind some of this? There is, okay. Here's the interesting thing about Third Strike is that this isn't like a full game. This isn't a, a a big game like a Mortal Kombat 9 or a Tekken 7 or a Dragon Ball that has like a ton of content, right? It's not. Like the, every single version of this game that has come out is essentially an arcade port with some extra fluffy shit. Third Strike gets its renown and its laurels specifically on visuals, sound, and gameplay. It is those three things that essentially accompany everything that gives Third Strike its identity and it, it its its essential perception in the eyes of like, you know, just fans in general, people that people that like Street Fighter or like fighting games. So the, the fact that like they were they were willing to put, you know, on on a, on a list that would a, a, appropriate a very large casual audience as well. They're willing to put a a Third Strike, essentially what is an arcade game on that list at the highest regard based on those three elements is pretty nice.